So we decided to add this video just to give you an idea of why some of the issues you're going to encounter in this course are actually important. And you may notice that we added this video later. I'm a little bit grayer, got a haircut, and um, hopefully a little wiser too, so I can make this a little clearer to you. So what do we have here? We have a simple operation, a matrix vector multiplication where we want to compute a vector y by multiplying matrix A times vector x. And how were you taught how to do a matrix vector multiplication? Well, you probably were told to take dot products of rows with the vector. So you have this times that, that's this term, plus this times that, that's that term, plus this times that, that's that term, plus this times that, which is that term. And if you compute it out, it's minus 5. And then you go to the next row, and that's this computation right here, and the next row, etc. Simple enough. Now, if I asked you to write a program for this, you probably would say, well, yeah, I, I can do that. So what do we have here? Well, we have a double loop where the I index will indicate what row we're working with. And then once we have determined what row we're working with, then we can have a loop index with J that actually does the dot product, where every time we multiply the appropriate entry of A, times the appropriate entry of x and update that uh, with y. And to, for this to be correct, we would have had to initialize the vector y to have all zeros in it. Okay, so far so good. And if I asked you, hmm, is this pseudocode correct? Then you might say, well, I prefer indexing starting at 1 or things like that, but probably you were okay. Now, that's not the only algorithm for computing a matrix vector multiply. What we've done here, we've carefully color-coded the columns of the matrix with different colors. And what you notice, if you look at all of the computations that need to be performed, is that we could have said, hmm, let's take the first column and multiply it by 1, and then take the second column and multiply it by minus 1, and add that to what we already had, and then go on to the third column and the fourth column. And if you think about it, if we use consistently j to index the column that we're working with and i to index the row that we're working with, then the algorithm that would implement this would simply be exactly this algorithm except with the two loops interchanged. Probably you can get that algorithm right as well. All right, well, let's make it a little bit more difficult. If you look at this matrix, then you notice a special property. You notice that it's a symmetric matrix. This entry occurs here, this entry occurs here, these occur here and there. And what you notice is that the upper triangular part of the matrix is simply the lower triangular part that has been flipped with respect to the diagonal. Now what that means is that often we don't want to store those entries or maybe other data that is stored there and we could replace those entries with a star because we can always find what that value is on or below the diagonal. So we've only stored now the lower triangular part of this symmetric matrix. Hmm. Now, let's go back to the first algorithm. How would we have to change our algorithm? Well, let's look at a typical row i. We would do this times that plus this times that, and then we would have to do this times that, but that entry we would find here, and then this entry we would find here. So the part that would have been stored there is now stored there. 
And what that would mean is that we would have to change our loop slightly. And we'd probably do something like for j equals 0 to i, because at that point we're at the diagonal. And then we would continue with for j is equal to i plus 1 through n minus 1 and update y. But now we would want to find our entry at aji, multiplying xj and adding it to yi. So now we have two loops there. Hmm, is that loop correct? Should this be i minus 1 or should that be i? Should this be i or should this be i plus 1? Already things are getting a little bit more complicated. Now here's the problem. Often matrices are stored by columns. That's known as column major order. And therefore, if you access the matrix by columns, then you end up getting better performance. Now, back when we stored the entire matrix, it was easy to find the algorithm that only accesses the matrix by columns. Wait a second, that was the one where we exchanged the loops. And, um, but here it's a little bit more difficult because notice that the algorithm here that used to go by rows, which is not preferable, now does part of a row and then part of a column. If you looked at the other algorithm that went down the column, you would start by going across the row and then going down the column. So neither of these algorithms primarily accesses the matrix by columns. And it turns out that there is a considerable performance benefit to doing this. Okay. Here we have a graph where we plot along the x-axis the size of the matrix, so that would be n, and along the y-axis we plot Time. And what you notice is that the algorithm that, strict, that originally went by rows but now sort of turns the corner, as well as the algorithm that originally went by columns but now kind of turns the corner, neither of those get particularly good performance. And it turns out there actually is an algorithm that does much better. That's the one here on the bottom. So the question becomes, how would we find that algorithm? It turns out that's actually non-trivial, even for experts. Or, if we have the algorithm, how do we know it's actually correct? Hmm. So, by the time you've finished week five of this course, you'll be able to systematically derive a whole family of different algorithms for this particular operation. And you'll then be able to recognize the one that actually accesses the matrix primarily by columns. And then if you coded this up with a language like C, we're going to be using MATLAB, but if you did it in C, then all of a sudden you would see a considerable performance benefit. But first, we need to learn some fundamental techniques before we can get there.